All right, in our latest video, we're going to take you through how to determine centroids of more complex shapes. So the first thing we got to do is just kind of analyze what's being done here. We've got three shapes, right? So let's go ahead and circle those. Here's shape one, and shape two looks to be the semicircle, and then shape three looks to be just a rectangle. So let's kind of consult our table down here. So this is what I'm talking about, this area right here. Okay, so we're looking at our table. We're going to have to get our, our center points of these. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of mark the origin. Everything's going to be based on that point. So think of like your XY coordinate system. I've got Y's up, so I'm going to look at shape one. And shape one is the whole rectangle, right? That's what shape one is. So in shape one, it looks like half, our magic number is four, right? So half of four is going to be two by two. For our centroid here, our, our center point for y, it's just going to be two. We could go ahead if we wanted to and do the x at the same time. So shape one, our x is also going to be two because it's smack dab in the middle, right? Let's clean some stuff up here. So we've got shape one. Now let's take a look at shape two. I'm going to recircle that centroid though. So shape two is a little more difficult. That's, 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 you know, it's a semicircle. We can go ahead and we can do X though, right? We know X is right here. It's still two inches. So for shape two on X, we can go ahead and say that's, that's two. Let's talk about how to do that Y though. So to do the Y, so we're looking at Y two. That's what we're really looking for. We could say our formula is four times the radius and then three times pi. We can use that formula. So that comes out to be something like, we got four times 1.25, and then three times pi. All right, then we carry it on back down. This ends up becoming 0.3395. Now the issue is that is actually saying from here. Okay. So to get our y, we actually need to subtract it from 4. So we're going to say 4 minus 0.3395. And when we do that, we get that our y is going to equal roughly 3.66. Because remember, there's our magic point right here. There's the origin. So we're going to go up. Right? So for our y, we're going to say 3.66. Let's go ahead and let's clean it up a little bit. So we've got shape one and we've got shape two. And let's, uh, let's focus on shape three. So shape three is a little more simple. It's just a regular old rectangle now, right? So for our Y, it's just half of this, right? So 0.75 divided by two, that's going to give us 0.375. All of these should be labeled as inches, by the way. I should have done that earlier. And then if we take a look at our X again, so our X is right here going over, it's half of four, right? So again, it's two. That comes out to be pretty nice for us. Now the A column right here, all we're doing there is calculating the area, all right? So if we look at our area for, the, for shape one, that's the whole rectangle, right? The whole rectangle tells us it's four by four. So that's gonna equal 16. So we can go ahead and say 16 inches. Now we're squared though. And then let's take a look at shape two. So shape two is right here. That's the semicircle. And the formula for a semicircle, I always just, you know, we can use the formula for, there's the formula for a circle, right? And then we divide it by two. Okay, so after we plug those numbers in, we get the area to be 2.4544, and I'm doing some round in there. Now here's the key on that one. That is actually an empty space, right? There's nothing there, so we're actually gonna put a negative in front of that. Anytime we have an empty space, which we're getting ready to have down here as well, we put a negative in front of there. So let's do that, let's get number three now. Here's shape three. So it looks like we've got to get this line here, this length. What is that? So we could take 2.3 minus 0.85, and that'll give us that side, right? That'll give us the length of that side. And then we know that the height here is 0.75. So 
So in the end, after we do our fancy math, it's going to be 1.0875. And again, that's an empty space, so we're going to make that negative as well. Here's the deal. All of these numbers, the area is going to be the same down here too, right? I mean, it's the same shape, so regardless of whether we're you know, on X or Y, these numbers are going to stay the same. The area is not going to change. So we'll go ahead and bring those on down. And while we're here, we need to go ahead and add them all together. So this, after we do the addition, comes out to be 12.4581. And then down here, it's going to be the same, right? Because the area didn't change. So I'll write that down here as well, 12.4581. Now let's move over here to our last column. And what that is saying is we need to take Y1, so right here, times A1, so right here. And we're gonna do that all the way down the list here. So our numbers, this is 32 inches cubed now. Everything will be cubed. This will actually be negative 8.9831, again cubed. And then this will be negative 0 0.4078. And we're going to go ahead and we'll add these up as well. So this ends up becoming 22.6091. And we need to do the same thing down here. It's going to change up slightly. So this first number is going to be the same. But now we're going to be a little bit different. So this will be negative 4.9088. And then we'll move down and we'll get the last one, which is negative 2.175. We'll add all those together and this ends up becoming 24.9162. All right, so we've got some magic happening now. There's some magical numbers. We need this one and we need this one. And also we need this one. And we could go ahead and use this. These are the same, of course. But now what we're going to do is we're actually going to plug those into these formulas right here. Okay, so for our y, it says the sum of y a1. Well, that's, that's this number right here. So we'll say 22.6091. And we're going to divide that by the yellow. So the 12.4581. So the and then for down here on our X, let's make that a different color. So for our X, same thing, we're going to take the 24, so the 24.9162, and divide it by the 12.4581. So when we do, we're going to get 2 for the X. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this top one here. What we get for Y, we're going to get 1.8148. So really close to two, isn't it? So now what we can do is, let's go ahead and apply some numbers here. So we know our X is two, right? So we'll come over, here's one, here's two. You know, there's one, there's two. So our X is gonna be somewhere on this line. And then our Y is looking, we're looking at 1.8148. So two is halfway, right? So we're gonna probably be about right here when we do our centroids. And that's how we determine the centroid. A couple of keys on that, really at the beginning, especially because you're kind of new to this stuff, this table right here is really helpful. I would utilize that at the beginning. 